This is problem 4.9.10. Now I've already solved this, so I'm just gonna go over the solution that's already here. And this question says use Newton's method, which is in your textbook, page 473. I have it at the top of the notes right here, the process we're gonna be using. And we're gonna approximate a root, so root means a zero uh, of this equation. Uh, now you might be thinking, well, this equation is not gonna equal zero. True, so what we're gonna do is create a function that equals zero, starting with this equation here. And we can subtract either the left to the right or the right to the left, it doesn't matter. So I just, it's uh, less rewriting to just subtract the x to the other side. So I went ahead and did that right here. So now we have an equation that you, uh, one side equaling zero. So now we're all set to apply Newton's method and our function is just this equation right here or I should say our function is the left side of the equation right here so we let f of x equal 3 sine x minus x we're going to solve f of x equals 0 which is exactly this equation using Newton's method uh, so we're going to always need a derivative in calculus so let's go ahead and compute that derivative of sine is cosine derivative of x is 1 so we get 3 cos x minus 1 is our derivative now our problem already uh, gave us the x1 value equaling 2. Now I realize if you follow along with the uh, labels up here, you should have been given an x0 value, uh, but these questions are written starting with an x1 value, so really what you're really going to be using is this right here. So you're starting with x1, you're going to get x2, and all we're going to do is just plug in all these values and get our x2. So we got f of x1, f prime of x1, right there. Now, these are ugly numbers. You can put them into a calculator if you would like, uh, but you can also just answer in this form right here. So we got our x2 formula here, and we've already computed, again, these values. We're just gonna plug them in here. And we go ahead, plug them in, uh, and get this x2 right there and that will go right in here for what is x2 unfortunately x3 is even uglier so I'm not going to go through all the steps because it's a lot of writing uh, I will go through the first step so this is just using that formula above how to start from x2 and get x3 you plug in x2 into the function on the top uh, x2 into the derivative of the function in the bottom and then take your x2 value and subtract that number. And what does f of x2 look like? It's right over here. Unfortunately, you're gonna to have to plug in this into your f function, and your f function is right up here, so it's a bit of a pain, and I'm not gonna go through all those steps, but it's really just plugging in values. You don't need to simplify, and it's gonna be a bit of an ugly mess. So in my opinion, now is probably the right time to switch to using decimal approximation might save you some writing. I know my open math needs, I think, three decimal places generally, so I'd maybe go three or four just to be safe, and that will give you your x3 value.